Is it possible that the elites are hiding secrets bigger than we ever dared to imagine? Yes! Archaeology as an institution claims that they know enough about the past to rule out completely any possibility of any kind of thing that we would call a civilization during the Ice Age. But there's a real problem with that, because archaeology has only investigated tiny areas of the world. A great deal of archaeology that's done is done because a road or a dam is being built. And archaeologists are called in to make sure that there's nothing of historical interest in there. So it's random in that sense, the areas that they're looking at. Then, <coughs> most important to me, is that issue of sea level rise at the end of the Ice Age. That 400 foot rise in sea level that occurred when the Ice Age came to an end. The 27 million square kilometers of continental shelves that were swallowed up by the sea at that time, which have hardly been investigated by archaeology. There is some marine archaeology. They're even beginning now, just in the last few years, to look at the continental shelves. And that's when the whole notion of Doggerland was discovered that Britain was joined to the continent and that there was a there were there were people there. Steady. Uh, but most we did that Brexit once. Yes. And we'll do it again <laughs> yes. if we have to. Even if it takes an ice age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so the 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 main focus of marine archaeology is on shipwrecks from relatively recent history. There needs to be a much more comprehensive survey of the continental shelves before we can write off the possibility of a civilization destroyed in that cataclysm. And it's not only the continental shelves. Then you've got the nine million square kilometers of the Sahara Desert. We know for sure that there were periods during the Ice Age when the Sahara was rich and fertile. Huge river systems ran through it. There were lakes in the Sahara. And yet, because it's remote, because it's very expensive to operate there, very little archaeology has been done in the Sahara. So that's another 9 million square kilometers of the Earth's surface that archaeology really doesn't know a lot about. And then there's the Amazon rainforest. Now, it used to be about 7 million square kilometers, but these horrific clearances that have been taking place in the Amazon have brought, brought, brought it down to closer to 5, 5 to 6 million square kilometers that are still untouched under canopy rainforest. Um, and and uh, this is another area where only very minimal archaeology has been done. And for archaeology to claim that it knows everything about our past, while it's not investigated the continental shelves, it's not investigated the Sahara Desert, and it's not investigated the Amazon rainforest, uh, is a terrible oversight, in my view, particularly since, I repeat, I'm not against individual archaeologists. I'm against the institution. And there are archaeologists now working with a technology called LIDAR, light imaging and detecting and ranging, which you fly a plane over the area that you want to look at, and it can look down through the canopy of the Amazon rainforest, and it can see what's underneath it. And what they're finding is evidence of, of enormous cities that existed in the Amazon. Oddly enough, those cities were actually spoken about by a, a, a Spanish traveler in the um, late 1500s. Um, and and uh, why did they vanish? Because the Spanish brought with them smallpox. And the smallpox completely destroyed the populations of the, of the Amazon. But at one time, it was, a, it was a flourishing, highly populated area. Secondly, they were creating enormous sacred constructions, things that we would call henges today, like Avebury Henge, that deep circular trench that surrounds Avebury. Uh, in the Amazon, the LIDAR, LIDAR technology is finding dozens and dozens of examples of these. Enormous henges. Some of them are circular, some of them are square, some of them enclose a circle within a square. It's all very geometrical. It's most unexpected in the Amazon, and it's very, very, very old. Been detected by LIDAR, they've been physically examined in places that have been already cleared of rainforest. They definitely exist, they're definitely old, and what's needed now is a much more thorough investigation of the Amazon rainforest itself by archaeology, if archaeology wishes to continue to claim that it knows everything about the human past. It's analogous in many ways to fields that I pay more attention to myself, where there is an assumption that where there has been no exploration or observation, nothing exists. Yeah. <laughs> There's no. nothing there. Well, you, have you looked yeah. yet? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah. It is, that, I, once, uh, there's Brian Cox, who's someone I actually really like, who is an atheist and stuff, like he said, if you can't measure it, it isn't 
there mm -hmm. and i felt like but surely that means that we are limiting all potential realities to the realities that can be contained by sensory instruments that by their nature must be limited yeah literally to weighing measuring and counting yes the reality is confined to what we can weigh measure and count that that is largely the position of of mainstream science in this area that's where rupert sheldrake gets himself into so much trouble because you can't weigh measure and count telepathy for example uh, you can do scientific experiments concerning it, and Rupert has done so. His work is scientifically rigorous, but it's dismissed automatically because most scientists say, of course there's no such thing as telepathy. The brain is, uh, the, brain is the generator of all consciousness, and it's limited to our bodies, and it cannot communicate with other brains without words or language in between. It's necessarily speculative to include Carl Sagan's beautiful idea that everything ever said is still reverberating limitlessly in space, that TV broadcasts in the mm. 1940s emanates still there amidst the limitless. And if you can accept that vibration operates in that way and there is a vibrational quality to mm. consciousness, the idea that consciousness could be intercommunicative, speculatively at least, mm. that seems plausible. But within this idea that only that which can be measured can be real is the ridiculous assumption that by some extraordinary coincidence we have been endowed with all potential instruments for for discerning all potential realities yes. when even most basic mainstream cosmology includes the idea of infinity mm. and eternity. Wouldn't it be an extraordinary coincidence that on one hand you expect accept the infinite and on the other hand you say, but we have got all of the necessary instruments to evaluate the infinite. That is ludicrous. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. It's too true arrogance and, 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 and hubris. I've noticed it um, in the cherry-picking of my work that critics do. Um, I have, from time to time, I think it might, it might take up two pages in America before a book I published in 2019, and maybe a page or two in other earlier books, where I've speculated, is this lost civilization that I'm looking for, did they have other ways of manipulating matter that we don't have? Um, mm. Did they... Should I perhaps take seriously the Egyptian traditions of pre ancient Egyptian traditions of priests chanting and raising blocks into the air? Should I should I take that seriously? And I, I actually think I should take that seriously because I've climbed the Great Pyramid five times and it's an incredibly difficult, impossible monument to explain. Everything about it is just mind blowing. And and the notion that huge long ramps which sloping at ten degrees, that teams of people pulled 20, 30, 70 ton blocks up and deposited them inside the Great Pyramid above the King's Chamber at about 300 feet above the ground. Um, I, th I think that the, the conventional method of explaining that is very limited. And I think we should be open to the possibility that we are not the masters of everything that human beings can do, and that it is possible that people did things in a different way in the past, that telekinesis may have been a real power. Now, the point I want to make is that in my work, that is a tiny fraction of 1% of what I write. And I label it from the beginning as speculation. Mm. But when archaeologists critique my work, that's what they focus on. Hancock believes in telepathy and telekinesis. He's obviously a lunatic. Once again, we're dealing with propaganda. And once again, we're dealing with a fixed paradigm about what reality is.